Hey gang, so Jason here, and just give me a second to uh, kind of get things set up. Um, it will just take a second. So, I don't know why, but um, stuff... Hey, what's up, BB? Stuff doesn't show up uh, very well on my phone, like questions and things like that, but... Uh, mm -hmm. So I try to bring it up here on the, the laptop so I can see those. Anyway, got that going. So uh, I thought we would weather one of these uh, top shelf Prairie Monster versatiles here. So these are some of my favorite tractors of all time to customize. And um, anyway, you might have seen the Ford that I posted on Instagram the other day. And it's actually the thumbnail for this, this video. Um, and everybody seemed to like that. And I had tons of questions on how I did it. So it's real simple. So I thought, well, what the heck? Let's uh, let's do this. Yes, I am still in my pajamas. Actually, I went to work this morning, uh, and then I came home, and I decided I was going to get comfortable, and then come down here and spend the afternoon uh, working away. So I w I was in some blue jeans. They're good and dirty now. So I thought, well, what the heck? Let's uh, let's get comfy. So we're comfy. All right. So here's what you need. You need a tractor or an implement. Um, Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for coming, Casey. First live one. So you need a tractor, an implement, whatever. Do I have a lot of money? Nope. <laughs> That's why I do these and sell them because I don't have a lot of money. Um, anyway, so you need a tractor uh, or implement or whatever. And then, uh, so here's what I use. So black paint. This is just testers enamel. You can use you can use gloss or flat, either one or both. Um, then I use silver. This is a gloss silver. So this is an 1150 versatile. This is from uh, this is from um, Top Shelf Replicas. So, and then I use uh, rust color paint. Then this is this is like craft paint, and I'll kind of get into why I use this a little more lately uh, or uh, later. Melted chocolate, and then uh, territorial beige. The, the specifics aren't perfect, but I like a dark and I like a light. So, um, but we'll set those off to the side. Those are later. You're gonna need something to clean your brush with. So brush cleaner, water for cleaning mm -hmm. this paint, and then uh, I also use uh, Tamiya weathering powders. So, anyway, there you go. Oh, let's see. There we go. All right. So first up, I'm going to start with silver. Oh, you know what else you need? And I had it sitting here, down here, a paper towel. And I'll explain that uh, pretty quick. So I like these really small brushes. You can get them anywhere. You can get them, you know, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, online at a billion different places, whatever. These are really small I like these because you can get into really small places with them and you can do really small details with them. So anyway, let's get my silver cracked open here. And uh, I've already shaken it, so shouldn't need anything else. So I'm going to get just a, a little bit on the brush and I'm going to wipe it off. But then here's, here's the trick to this whole process, okay? Then I'm going to wipe it on the towel. And I'm going to wipe it quite a bit. You know, there. I kind of don't want much on the brush, okay? Because we kind of want this a little bit dry. So now we've got to strategically think here, where would we have paint wore off on this tractor? So the obvious place is on this platform, right? So just come in and, and just put like where you think the operator of this tractor, where his feet would have been the most, right? Because that's what's wearing this paint off. I think right there, and I think we're going to have another one over here. Actually got to reload this brush. And I mean, that's... That's fine. You're going to be reloading the brush a lot because, again, you do not want this super thick on here, guys. Uh, if you do, it's just going to look like you painted over it, and at the end, it's not going to look weathered. It's just going to look painted. So there's that. I'm going to come down a little bit on these steps. I know it's hard to see, but I'll bring the model closer as uh, as I sort of finish up or as I, as I finish each part, I guess. This is gonna take a little bit, guys. I mean, it'll it'll we'll probably be here a good half hour, 45 minutes, hour, something like that. Anyway, so I'm just going down the steps of this. On the yellow, 
It doesn't show up quite as well as it did on that blue Ford that I did yesterday, or the other day, eh, two days ago that you guys might have saw. But it will look great. And you don't want it to stick out like a sore thumb necessarily, I don't think. And then I'm also going to go in around the door handle here and a little bit on the door because I think there's going to be some wear on the door. Now, keep in mind, this tractor's old, so... All right. Check this out. There you go. Like I said, I'm just kind of keeping it light there, right? You don't, you don't want it too bad. I'll figure out where the camera's at on this dang phone eventually. So you can see that. It's just kind of some light wear. Now, okay, I've got other places. We've got to do silver. So, uh... If you get bored, you guys can wander off and do something and just catch this, uh... Rerun. So another place back here on the hitch. Obviously, we're going to have a ton of wear on the hitch and draw bar over the years. Um, so I'm going to go kind of heavy back here, or at least heavier, because I want this to show quite a bit of wear. In fact, that bottom, I'm probably going to be mostly silver on. Check that out. See what I did there? Just get that silver in there. Like so. Yeah, definitely the fuel cap. We're going to do some wear on that. Um, and I'll show you guys that in a bit. Steps two. Um, all right. So both fuel caps. So this, this obviously has two caps on it. So let's just do, let's say, uh, just a little bit on... The side of this fuel cap right and then I'm gonna put some on the lip here because I think at some point somebody might of course now everybody is messaging me I haven't gotten a single text message all freaking day and then I want to go live and everybody and their dog is like messaging me that drives me nuts I should have turned that off I guess right but it's kind of a pain in the butt and then I forget to turn it back on really I mean, it's just like nonstop, and I don't, I can't do it while I'm on live. Sorry, guys, just gonna have to deal with the buzzing, cause, ugh. All right, I'm gonna do a little down here, cause don't forget, on these top shelf models, you've got a nice detailed bottom, so uh, we we want to work on that too. I'm almost feeling like, what do you guys think? I'm almost feeling I need to be heavier on these on the ladder and steps, right? Like it kind of feels like it does. Just a little bit. Don't want to go overdoing it here, but anyway, again, I'm just constantly kind of like wiping on the towel. Because I don't want solid silver here. I want that red to show through. It's going to kind of come down the lips of those. That'll look good. And then I think also, up here on the platform, I think there's going to be some wear there because this fellow's washed that front window a million times over the course of this tractor. Eh, probably not a million, but hundreds. Enough that uh, he's going to have some wear for sure up there, I think. So we're just going to put... And no, like notice, I'm not really doing random here. Um, I, I kind of have a rhyme to my reason. I think, if you can see it, I think his foot is going to be facing the tracker. So I made my marks that direction because I think that's how he's stepping there. And that's, uh, I think that's important to, to make it look good, to make it look realistic. All right, I'm going to do on this side... On this fuel cap as well. I'm going to go heavier here because I feel like most of the time they're filling up over here, right? Sure seems like it. So, am I selling it when I'm done? Probably. Uh, most likely. Yes, I am going to the St. Louis show. I'm not going to be selling at the St. Louis show. Although, if you want something from me, I could certainly bring it to you. Um, I'm going to be filming. Uh, there's going to be a roundtable discussion that Friday night at 6 p.m. in the ballroom. And I'm going to be taking a part of that and filming it, so that's going to be fun. And then, um, you know, I'll just be around in general 
doing my thing. I don't know, like I I wouldn't mind actually filming the displays, but you know, Toy Tractor Times does a nice job of that, and they do all the interviews and stuff. And I'll be honest, I uh, I don't care to watch or to to record interviews and all that sort of thing. I don't mind looking and recording the the uh, some of the the displays, but they they already kind of cover everything as far as um, you know the details of the displays and talking to the people about the displays. So it's kind of one of those things where it would be redundant if I did it. And I almost feel like I'd step it on their toes, so I'm not going to, yeah, I'm just not going to do that. But, um, yeah. Anyway, yeah, definitely hitchware. Um, so, now we have articulating joint. That's one of the cool things about these top shelf tractors. They have so much detail. And, I mean, these generally, uh, at least when they were new, were like 40 bucks, roughly. Um they're starting to kind of appreciate a little bit. Almost to the point where I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, it's like it's getting to be where it's like, okay, do you do you, do you weather these now? Do you, do you kind of goof them up or do you just sell them for what they are? But for right now, I still want to weather them. I may swap tires on this one too. We'll see. Uh, it won't be today, but um, I don't know. We'll see. I might just sell this one. It is. I've got several of these left to do. So I bought... Uh, quite a few of these this last weekend from one of the guys I get wholesale stuff from so anyway so I'm just kind of going through here with silver and then I don't know under here we definitely want to do some stuff so like I'm thinking corn stalks and things like that have brushed on the bottom of these tanks as well as the hitch and I'm just gonna I am gonna kind of do I want to pull back on the tractor but it's kind of going to be a little bit random. Um, just because I feel like it probably would be that way. We'll even do some on the diff here. All right. And how about... That silver just does not show up on the yellow very well. But... We'll get some. Ooh, that's a little heavy. All right, we got we to gotta fix that. That's too much. So you can kind of clean your brush if you get it too heavy which I did, and you can kind of pick some of that back up, which it's okay if it's too heavy here. I mean, it's it, this is definitely, you know, where you have stock wear and things like that. I'm going to do it on the bottom of these steps, just a little, like so. Anyway, so that's kind of what I'm thinking for now. We'll do some other colors there, too. So now... The elephant in the room. If you have ever seen one of these old versatiles, you know this exhaust stack is knackered. It is toast. So, we're going to start with silver. And I do want to, I don't want to get it super heavy. I want some of the black to come through. But, I want it to mostly be silver. I know it's going to be hard to see. I mean, it's hard to work and show you guys at the same time, but I'm just painting, again, dry, basically. You know, silver, put it on the napkin, get most of it off, and then start painting. And like I said, if you get too much or whatever, I mean, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's your tractor. Every tractor is different when it comes to weathering, you know, because they all sit out and they have different conditions and different, you know, different wind, different weather, so on and so forth. So now you got to be sure to do both sides of the uh, the pipe here. All right. Yeah, I'm digging that. And then this top, we want to hit that too. And I feel like it's going to be super worn and rusty on the top because it is just always exposed to the sun, so on and so forth. Why does Ertl make cheap decals? Yeah, good question. I don't know. Ertl's decals, are, uh, with very few exceptions, are pretty crappy. 
uh, I'd love to know that too, especially when you know companies like Top Shelf. I mean, this is a good decal. Top Shelf is a small company, and they got a kick butt decal there. Um, and then Speccast is really on their game with decal. So I always kind of wonder the same thing. Ertl does everything as cheap as possible. That's just the bottom line. Um, you know, I don't want to knock them too bad because obviously there's a lot of tractors we would never have if it wasn't for Ertl. But, um, yeah, they they definitely uh, don't do things the way I do them. That's for sure. But, like I said, where would we be without them? So, glad we got them. All right, I'm kind of kind of digging that. Let's uh, let's take a close up look of our silver on our exhaust stack. What do you guys think of that? Uh, it looks pretty good. Oh, a seventy thirty school project. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's a pretty sweet uh, sweet school project. Yeah, I think so too. I think for you know fifteen bucks a tractor, they could. They could do better because in the past they've done better, if we're honest. So, hey, what's up, Nathaniel? How's it going? Um, I mean, that's just my opinion. In the past, they've they've done better, and so you know we we know what we know what Ertl's capable of, and they can do a really good job. But just sometimes they just choose not to. Honestly, it's, it's like quality control or something. Um, you know, like I said, I hate to knock them too much, but I mean, come on, guys. You know, <laughs> um, when when. When you're capable of doing, when you're capable of doing something really awesome, and you do something subpar, I, I don't know. Like that just reflects badly. I think. Okay, next up, I'm gonna do black. So black is gonna be for like greasy areas, guys. So um, you know, diesel spill around the fuel caps for sure. Back here around the hydraulic lines for sure. Uh, and then a bunch of stuff in the articulating joint and under the tractor. So that is where I'm headed next. So let's do this diesel cap first. So I want it relatively heavy here. This is versatile. This paint is not one to stick to this versatile. I had no trouble with that Ford the other day. It's kind of goofy when you think about it because it's the same tractor essentially. Just decal differently, but it could be my paint. I don't know. It's a little cooler down here today too, so unfortunately winter's basically here. Uh, we'll see. I'll show you guys how this looks when I get get it finished up here. But anyway, like I said, we're gonna hit it with black. This is gonna, you know how diesel looks when it's kind of all gummy and dried up. That's the look we're going for here. And I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but our tractors have diesel spills around the, uh, the cap. We try to wash ours off, but, um, it's, you know, it's still, by the end of the season, they're pretty rough looking until they get a good cleaning. And like I said, the idea is this versatile has been used heavily over the course of its life. These versatiles are workhorses, so that's what we want. All right, so this is kind of how this is turning out right now. So like I said, I, I kind of want it heavy on that side. Um, you know, just kind of uh, looks good. So you fractured your leg a month ago. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that sounds terrible. I did that one time. I uh, I broke the uh, growth both growth plates in my knee playing football when I was in high school. That messed me up pretty good for a while. Um uh, it's no fun not being able to walk. I missed harvest that year. I missed I missed most of football season. I missed all of track season. I threw shot put and discus. Missed all of that. All of baseball. And I got my driver's license late because uh, my birthday was in that winter. And um, I had a broken leg. So, yeah, that was exciting. Good stuff there. Looking back, though, you know, like, it's kind of a big deal. Like, oh, crap, I missed my driver's license. I didn't get my driver's license or, or on time or whatever. And, like, it's a big deal when you're a teenager. But when you're an adult, it's like, okay, yeah, whatever. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> All right. So I got this side done. 
again, not doing. I mean, and it's uh, like honestly, it's pronounced however you want to pronounce it. Like it's pronounced every direct, every way, versatile, versatile. I've heard it both ways. I've heard it both ways from people who work for versatile. So, like, we're not nitpicking over pronunciations here. It's a regional thing. Anyway, I'm going to now paint some hydraulic mess on the back here. Well, this paint is just not flowing today. Maybe let's give it another good shake. It's just not wanting to flow. Yeah, anyway, like how something is pronounced, literally the least important thing on the planet, as far as I'm concerned. So, <laughs> there's just bigger problems in life than that. This paint is just being frustrating. It's like it's it's wanting to be runny on me, but it is not. It's not sticking to where I want it to go. I don't know what the deal is with that. That is not a problem I have had recently, and I'm wondering if it's the temperature down here. It's probably about 63 right now, so, you know, maybe. Yeah, it, it it's a regional thing. I mean, it, it just is. It, it's that's the way a lot of ag stuff is. I I was talking to some guys the other day from New England. And they pronounce Steiger, Steiger. I, I mean, look at my shocked face. Like, I, they, I didn't even know what they were talking about. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, we have Steiger. They had, like, a Steiger Panther. And I'm like, are you, like, what? Are you messing with me? Like, Steiger, what? And then I realized that apparently there is a pocket of this country where Steiger is pronounced Steiger. Right? What? I, I agree. Like, I am like, what? I don't know. So, East Coast people, man, they're different. I don't know. And these are super nice guys. I love talking to them. We had a, we had a ball talking tractors, but, um, yeah, I was like, you guys, I don't know, your pronunciation's weird. <laughs> All right. I, so I'm working in this articulating joint here with this black, and I want it to be gooey and buh and just all kinds of nasty in there. So, and it's going to be really hard to show you guys. But uh, I don't know if it's going to show up too well or not. But I just want that. I want that articulating joint to be dingy. I, you know, that's just, that's the nastiest area of the tractor. So, yeah. What's going on, Nathaniel? All right, so now, now that I'm greasing things up, we're going to come down here on the bottom side. Differential is going to get some goo for sure. Uh, I'm going to put some on the bottom of the engine. Uh, more on this articulating joint, especially where everything connects. We've got some, uh, like a transfer case or something through here. It's getting it back here where the articulator, articulating joint connects up. It's getting it. We just we just want this to be just a gooey mess down here. I mean, you don't want to overdo it so that it looks unrealistic, but I want this to be funky down here. I'm going to put some even... On the inside of my axles, maybe where the planetaries got something going on. There we go. So, I don't know. I don't know if that black's showing up too great on the camera, but you can see up here around the diff and through here and then back and through here. Just kind of making it good and nasty looking. <laughs> All right, so that's... That's probably good on the black. I mean, we can always come back. if You know, if we get this thing kind of wrapped up and decide it needs a little more somewhere, we can take care of that. So I'm going to clean this brush out. I should weather a spec cat. Oh, that would be pretty cool, actually. I uh, I only bought one of those. those uh, oh, the Brent. Oh. Yeah, I should. Maybe I will someday. The gravity wagon, yeah. 
That'd be kind of cool, actually. I've never done a gravity wagon like that. Maybe I'll have to get one uh, in the, at the next show I'm at and uh, give that a try, because that could be fun. I, I like that, yeah. I like doing stuff like that. I've got a planter here that uh, I want to weather up sometime this winter. We'll see. All right, next up is Rust. So we're going to give Rust a good shake here. Now, Rust is predominantly going to be on this stack. And I'll show you, it's going to look cool when it's done, especially blended with the silver that we got on there and then the black that already came with the stack. Um, and I'm just going to use the, I mean, I clean this brush good. I'm just going to go right back to it. Uh, kind of no need of getting another brush all funky and dirty. So I'm going to wipe the rust, but not as much on my towel. Just kind of one little spot here. And then I'm coming in and I'm painting this pretty hot and heavy, but still... I'll show you after I get this first coat done. I want to make sure my silver comes through. And you'll see what I mean here when I do that. And my light's just not perfect right here, is it? I will figure it out. So you can see that. Now, here we go. Let me try this real quick. Let's get you a little spotlight action on it. There we go. Anyway, so I still want, I want that rust on there, but I want the silver to just peek through behind the rust. So we don't want the whole thing like it's rusted out and it's going to fall apart. That's too heavy. But we don't, you know, we want that effect that it's aging and rusting pretty, pretty seriously. So, and, and like I said, just, uh, you know, practice with it. This paint, you know. This paint takes a little bit to dry, you know, a few minutes. So if uh, you got something you really don't like, you could always wipe it off with a shop towel or something too. So, all right, we're into another part. I wonder, uh, it could be, it could, I could too have too much bleh on this brush because it's really struggling again. It was perfect for a second. Now we're struggling to get it to pick up on this exhaust. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. I just had to, had to play with it a little bit. Now on the top, especially, on the top, especially where the pipe enters the muffler, I want that pretty heavy because I feel like that is a prime spot where water is going to settle in there. So, you know, and you just, you just kind of got to think about that. If this thing's sitting outside, a lot, or if it's been used for years, where where is it going to happen? Where's the rust and all that stuff going to be? So, and obviously, if you've been around tractors, you know the exhaust is is prime time for rust. So, and I'm going to put a little bit up on my rain cap as well. Oh, I need to hit this front a little bit. So the front of this exhaust is just not looking right. I mean, it's looking good, but it's it just it's too silver. So. And again, I'm trying to make vertical strokes with my brush here because I want it to look like water's falling straight down if I can. We don't want it to... Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. We don't want it to uh, be horizontal there because that just wouldn't be realistic. So, let's do that. Let's, pop, let's get this little extra light going here. You can kind of see it a little bit better. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm digging that a lot. Uh, that looks good. All right, so I don't want to get too carried away with the rust on the frame of the tractor, although I may just hit a few few places. So you get any more toy tractors for Christmas? I don't know yet. I hope so. Uh, that's you know that's what I want for Christmas. I want tractors. All my buddies are like, I want I want a smartphone, I want a blah, 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 a computer, a TV. I don't care about that stuff. I want a tractor. That's all, that's all I care about. Tractors and cars. And uh, cars are expensive, so toy tra tractors it is. I'm going to kind of lightly in a couple of the vertical surfaces. And it's so lightly that I know this is not going to show up on camera. But one, it's going to look, you know, it's just going to age it. But two, even though it's rust color, it's going to look like a little bit like dirt 
even though we're going to put dirt on it here. Pretty darn quick. All right, I'm liking that. I'm liking that quite a bit, so... I did get the uh, the Borgo Air Drill AgTech, and if uh, you look back through the videos, uh, I did a review on it. It's a pretty sweet outfit. It's stupid expensive, but it's pretty sweet. I use Dull Coat, um, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. So, um, I don't generally run an abrasive over it, although I've done it before. Uh, I just the problem with that is you've got one shot at it. And uh, so if it doesn't turn out the way you like, you're screwed. Uh, you've, you know, you've just, uh, you've kind of scuffed up your tractor. So yeah, I use dull coats. Uh, I just use testers dull coat. You can get a jar of this for like five bucks and it lasts forever. Literally had this dull coat for years at this point. And it's still good. Needs a good shaking. It's kind of settling a little bit. You can see there in a dark spot. Um, in fact, I'm going to turn that upside down for a minute. Yeah, so I'm kind of I'm kind of digging the way that is so far. So now we're going to switch to this this stuff. And the reason I switched to this stuff is one, it, this is difficult to get light, in my opinion, on there. I mean, it takes some practice. And so um, if this goes wrong, it's easy to wash off with water. So to wipe off. Again, I'm dry brushing. Yeah, I'm just I'm going on my paper towel here, trying to get a bunch off. Now, so again, this is this is going to be dirt. So almost want a random pattern here. So I'll go one way, and then I'll kind of try and wipe the other way. So I'm just trying to kind of dinge it up. Just, just want to get... Ooh, that's a little heavy on that red, though. That's tricky. That's what's tricky about this tractor in particular. The yellow and the red... Certainly, okay, we're going to have to get some off this brush. Let's go up here on the black where it won't show up as bad. And what we can do, because that's, that's turning out pretty heavy still. So, one, we're going to wipe this cleaner. But I will take another brush that is already dry, I haven't used. We'll come back through, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second, guys. It's just going to clean it up, get some of the globby off there that uh, I got need to do the same back here now this stuff dries super fast so be warned but like i said actually i'll show you because i've got too much on this back fender you can even just lick your finger boom that gets a bunch of it off and now i need to dry it but then you're kind of you're kind of good to start over so check out this hood so just a light you can see it's just it's just a light dusting on there i don't want it to be like super covered in dust I just want it real light. Ah, that's not the brush I wanted to use. Ah, well. It's hard to do hard to do a live video and detail at the same time. Work on a tractor. Talk and do this. I don't know how Bob Ross did all that painting all those years. That guy was just incredible, wasn't he? Just talking and teaching at the same time and kicking kicking out really cool paintings while he's doing it. Yeah, I like that. Kind of want to come over this versatile logo. I'm gonna get in behind the tires. Definitely on the side. Oh, this is this is good. This is like the perfect. Right now is like the perfect uh, amount of paint on the brush, in my opinion, because we can just sort of weather it up without getting too carried away here. And I'm just gonna touch almost every surface on this tractor, like this, even the wheels and tires. And in fact, I'm going to start working on these wheels and tires a little bit. I'd avoided them until now because obviously we don't need black or, or rust or um, silver or anything like that on our wheels and tires. But we do need a little bit of dirt. And yeah, I'm touching them. It's going to, you know, whatever. But it's not a big deal. Like I said, this paint dries super fast. So you can just pull them to get your lugs. I'll show you what that looks like. I keep going too close. So I'm just kind of like getting the shine off these tires. I could hit it with the dull coat, 
but that would be almost too aggressive, I found. So, we'll, we have the dull coat reserved for uh, certain certain spots of the tractor. All right. Now well, that, I need to dip in some water real quick, so just uh, give me a second. Okay. That'll work. Now we're going to go with, blah, uh, I'm sorry, melted chocolate. Ooh, the versatile 1150 or the Ford better. I kind of like the Ford better, I, and I don't know. Eh, that's I don't know, but uh, I like the Ford better. I don't know why either. I mean, I love this versatile. Don't get me wrong; they're both awesome. Uh, you know, I, I have both in my collection, and I've customized a whole bunch. Now, okay, so this is the darker color. So this I'm kind of gonna do on. Some of the places that have probably got more caked on dirt. And I'm still going to go light. I, I just don't want heavy. You know, the, I think the trick is moderation in all colors on this thing. Oh, let's get some way up in here. I mean, not too many people are going to look at that, but... I don't want a nice shiny spot hanging in the background there while people are trying to look at our nice, cool weathering job. Try to catch up on some of the questions real quick. Oh yeah, nice. Uh, laptop and a GoPro. Yeah, I could, I could probably use a new laptop to be honest with you. Mine's getting some age on it, but uh, it still works. It still edits video. It edits. Uh, pictures and things like that. So for right now, I'm going to stick with what I got. Um, you know, we got this, got this house to pay for and everything else, so there's that. <laughs> that kind of cuts into some some uh, funds. I'm going to get a little more on these tires and then a little on these steps. Maybe we're... I got some. And again, I mean, this brush is pretty dang dry. Here, I'll show you. Like, I mean, I'm barely getting any on my finger if I put it on my finger. So I, and I want it that dry. I just, I just want the hint of the color on there. I don't want to get crazy with it. So I'm kind of digging it, guys. I don't know. We may be close to done here. I, I, like I said, I don't want to overdo it. Um, I kind of want to do something to that engine, though. And I, so I think I'm going to try to grease it up a little bit with the black. Right where those filters are. I don't know if you guys can, if that'll show up too well on the... So we've got our, you know, our filters right down here. I want to grease that up some. And I want to hit this window with my lighter color paint as well. And I'll show you guys that. My lighter brown. You know, and wherever you guys are at, you know, you might have red dirt or something like that. So you might want to use different colors than I'm using. Just kind of got to play with it and see what works out best for you. There we go. I, like I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get carried away. And there we go. Let's try it this way. Let's get some light on it. And it's not showing up too well on the camera, but just a hint of black there. That's what I want. Um, just to look like those filters are, you know, they've been changed a hundred times, and this could use some, use some cleanup around them. Yeah, th hey, thanks, Brett, for the compliment. That, I think it is looking pretty good so far. I like it. I'm digging it. Um, if if uh, you know if nobody wants to buy it, it can go on my shelf. I don't care. <laughs> That's kind of the way I look at these things. I put it on put it on the new Dogtown display. All right, before I go to the dull coat, one more time, I'm gonna hit. I want to hit these windows. Um, windows are tricky because yeah, you can definitely overdo it. And I want, I want it to look like this. You can, I don't know if you can see the windshield wiper or not. I need to paint that detail is what needs to happen. I want it to look like that wiper has cleaned off part of this. Okay, that's a little much. So let's switch back to the dry brush and just pull that away just like so 
try to fill in that spot. And again, I want it to be subtle. I don't want it to be like completely dirted over here. I just want to look, and it's going to be hard for you guys to see on camera, but I don't know if I can get it right or not. Eh, I can't quite get the angle to see it. But if I'm looking at it, I can see a clean part of the window and a dirty part of the window, and that's exactly what I want that to look like. So I'm going to go around back, do the same thing. Perfect. Uh, maybe. Ah, that's a little heavy right there. Let's get rid of some of that. There we go. Like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to take my finger. I'm just going to smudge a little off. I got on a place I didn't want it. I didn't do any right here, did I? Let's get that covered up a little bit. Let's get it dirty. This thing's real dirty. All right. I buy some of my tractors from Outback Toys. Um, I buy wholesale from B and B Farm Toys, um, but uh, if you're gonna buy wholesale, you gotta buy a bunch. That's the tricky part. Um, but yeah, I definitely buy some stuff from Outback. There's no question about it. Um, they're pretty good guys there. I've always had good luck with them anyway. I know a lot of guys uh, like almost hate that they're almost like the Walmart or Amazon of the toy business because they sort of dictate the price. And then a lot of guys also hate that they pull the chasers out of their boxes. And, uh, oops, my thing fell off. Pull their chasers out of their boxes and then sell them for freaking fortune. And that kind of, I don't know, whatever. It is what it is. I'm not going to complain. Um, ah, get up there. There we go. Um, but, yeah, I buy from Outback. I buy from Bozen. Although Bozen got sold. I don't know the whole story on that yet. But uh, it sounds like Kate's still going to do some decals and custom stuff, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with the wholesale part, but, you know, whatever. Um, hey, what's up, Melinda? How are you today? Hope you're having a great Saturday. So this is dull coats. Tester's dull coat looks like that. Um, of course, it's backwards because of the way the camera does things. kind of silly to me, but surely they can figure out a way to do that, but I don't know, whatever. So, again, I don't want super heavy dull coat but here's the areas i want to dull down where can i buy the chevy trucks from uh me eventually b and b farm toys uh they'll be everywhere but when they get here they're they're on their way that's all we know right now is they're on their way so i want that ladder or that platform dull coated you can kind of see it. it's going to take a little bit to dry it's going to actually look glossy until it dries and it's going to look nice and dull um, yeah, the Chevy C60 trucks, uh, they're on their way. Like I said, that's all we know. We'll, we'll know when they show up now. That's kind of basically the next step in the process. Um, that's the way farm is go. So it's tricky sometimes to give specific dates or whatever. But yeah, um, when they get here, I'll do a video and I'll do like an official review and I'll put a link to my website for the love of trackers.com because they will be there. And uh, I will get them uh, as soon as I possibly can. I don't know. You know, I don't know. The guys, uh, I'm getting them from B&B. &B and I, I don't know. We may just hang on until we see each other again at a show to grab those rather than ship cases and cases and cases of trucks to me. But we'll see. And then uh, if you want to pre-order them, probably just contact B&B &B Farm Toys, uh, Custom Farm Toys. And those guys are awesome, super good guys. And obviously, I don't mind throwing business their way. I mean, they they uh, definitely hook me up. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, and I'll, uh, before I end this video, I'll, I'll show you guys. Um, I was super excited to get my last B&B &B order, which I picked up at the, the uh, Bloomington, Illinois show, Central Illinois Farm Toy Show last weekend, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend. And... Um, Brian put a little little Easter egg in there for me, so I was pretty excited. All right, I'm calling this for or this uh, this versatile versatile, however you guys want to pronounce it. Uh, I'm calling this good. I'll take some pictures of this, throw it up on Instagram and Facebook and all that probably. So again, I didn't go over the top with it. Like I know some guys like cover every inch of these things and dust and stuff, and that's cool. 
can I pre-order from you? So, I, um, sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like, um, can you shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram or so Facebook for the love of tractors, Instagram for the love of tractors, or if you want to like personally find me, Jason Shireman on Facebook. Um, um, yeah, because I don't know if there's a person. I don't think there's like a personal message thing on YouTube yet. Is there? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll figure out something. I, I don't really like. I honestly don't want to take your money um, up front, just because I don't feel comfortable doing that. And I know a lot of guys are fine with that, but I I don't like doing that. But yeah, I mean, I can put your name down for sure um, and reserve one for you if you if you want. So anyway, that's this guy. Oh hey, check that out. At that angle, you can kind of see my windshield wiper window thingy. So okay, cool. Yeah, hit me up on Instagram. That'd be awesome. Um. Anyway, all right, guys, that's that. I'm going to show you real quick the little Easter egg that Brian sent me because, I don't know, I just like feel like showing off, I guess. <laughs> so I bought a whole bunch of these from Brian at B&B &B, B &B Farm Toys at the show. These are going to get turned into Steigers. So um, they're going to be green. I know they never made a Steiger Quadrac. I know, I know, but I did. You guys have seen it before, and I think they're cool. That's what they're going to get turned into. But anyway, so I'm digging through the box, and Brian gave me a chaser. I didn't even know there was a chaser to these Quadracs. That is kind of crazy. I mean, I kind of thought, you know, I was on top of things, but um, I was digging through, and I'm like, hey, there's something different about that one. And turns out, yeah, there is. It's dusty. It's a chaser. I'm super excited to have that guy in my collection. I'm, like, really pumped. I don't go chasing chasers too much. I do like some of them, especially quad tracks and things of that nature. But, uh, yeah, that was cool. Anyway, I was super excited. That was, that was a fun surprise for me. So, anyway, big thanks to Brian at B&B Farm Toys uh, for that hookup. All right, guys, I guess that'll do it. Uh, we're coming up on, like, an hour on this video, so... Um, Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I will try to do more of these, like, uh, sort of build-along how-to things on Saturdays this winter if I can. I know I can't do it every Saturday because, you know, life is what it is. But, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll, I'll try my best to do more of these because I think it's fun. I mean, if I'm going to be down here building, I love uh, getting to conversate with you guys and everything. It's a lot of fun. So, All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it. Catch you later. My next project is to finish up this uh, this big Ford. And uh, that's, so that's going to get done today. And then I'm going to head over to Dogtown and do some work. So I'll probably record a video on that, maybe post it up this week. So, all right, guys. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you guys, too. Uh, I hope it's an awesome Christmas for everybody. So hope you get what you want. Hope uh, you get to be with family and all that, that fun stuff. So, all right, guys. Catch you later. Thank you for, so much for watching. I Seriously, like, I I can't thank you guys enough. I really appreciate it. You guys have... Uh, you guys have... Uh, your watching, subscribing, liking, all this, all the sharing, all that sort of stuff has opened up some doors for me in the farm toy world, and it's pretty sweet. So, thanks, guys. All right, I'll catch you later. Have a good one. Happy tracker hunting.